Hi, I'm Dr. Sheena Buva, physical medicine and rehab interventional spine physician. Welcome to a day in my life. So usually I start my days around 7, 7, 15 in the morning. I have a few injection slots before clinic, around three to five um, injection slots. So I review the patients before, the night before, reviewing their charts, going over their MRIs and x-rays so I have a better idea of what I'm actually doing when I go into the injection suite. Here's our injection suite. So in the morning, all my patients are here, you know, just go over them, make sure that the correct injections are for the correct patients. And then the patients are usually getting ready. The nurses are checking them in, getting their vital signs, putting an IV in if they're getting any sedation. And then I go in and talk to the patients, explain the procedure to them, mark on their back to make sure, you know, we are doing the correct side and the correct injection. And then I head out into the suite. So this is where I hang out for injections. All my patients' info are here, check them in. And then because we're using a lot of x-ray guidance, I put my gear on. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Number one, the skirt, lead skirt, protects all the reproductive organs. And then I have this vest here. People always ask me, does this get heavy? And it can. The nice thing is that it's separated into two parts, so it helps kind of distribute the weight a little bit better. And if I'm doing injections all day, I take them off in between cases, so it doesn't bother me too much. This is a thyroid shield. The thyroid gland is very susceptible to x-ray and radiation, so you want to protect that. This is my dosimeter. So it measures how much radiation exposure um, over a period of time. You want to make sure that that's as low as possible. And finally, these are my lead glasses. You want to your eyes are all another uh, organ that's very sensitive to radiation, so I wear these lead glasses. Helps prevent cataracts, or at least decreases the risk for cataracts. So this is the Chloro Suite. This machine here is called the C arm, for obvious reasons. It's shaped like a C. It's also called a fluoroscopy machine, so it's basically a live X-ray machine. So when we're doing injections. There's a radiology technologist here. There's a nurse up here monitoring the patient's vital signs, giving them any medications that they need. There's another uh, nurse over here as well. Um, that nurse is usually helping me drop medications and getting the patient situated. So it's a, definitely a team, uh, team in, this, in this suite here. So two major types of injections. Um, that we do in here. One is called the epidural steroid injection. So that's very good for nerve pain. So pain going down the arms or the legs from a disc herniation or a pinched nerve. And then the other one is more 
axial pain, so pain just in the neck or in the back, mid middle of the spine, that's more from arthritis pain. So we do what are called medial branch blocks, facet injections, or even radio frequency ablations to help with that kind of pain. So you come in, patients usually prepped, they're most often on their belly, and then the nurse and I draw up the medications to show you what one of the needles looks like. This is a spine needle. And so that goes into the patient's skin. We're using that x-ray machine, so every time I move the needle, the radiologist technologist takes a picture so we can see exactly where we're going so we're nice and safe. And then for an epidural, we go right where that nerve is, where that nerve is being pinched. I use some x-ray dye to show where the medicine goes so I can watch it on the screen. And then I also then put the steroid and numbing medication in there. And the patient is, I personally don't knock my patients out for these injections. I give them a little bit of anxiety medication if they're anxious, but normally patients do fine and numb up the skin, talk them through it, and they do pretty well. So. so after the patient's injections, the nurse wheels down the patient in their stretcher, and then they recover here in this room. We usually wash them for about 30 minutes just to make sure that they're doing okay. Check up on them after the injection, making sure that they're doing okay, no issues, and then I head up upstairs to do clinic. So let's go take that, check that out. step stool here that I use because I'm a little bit short, five foot two and a half. Can't forget the half here. So I use this to help with ergonomics. So when I'm dictating or when I'm typing, I'm not straining my neck too much or my back too much. So as a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician, one of the things that we are trained in are electrodiagnostic studies, also known as nerve conduction EMG studies. So these are for patients who have any numbness, tingling, for example, in their hand, you're unsure if it's coming from the neck, like a pinched nerve in the neck causing those symptoms or if it's something called carpal tunnel. So there's two parts to the test. One is the nerve conduction study part where we stimulate the different nerves in the arm here to see how fast, how slow the nerves are moving. So I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like. So stimulate right here, so just like that. That's my waveform there. And then we do another stimulation right here. One, two, three, like that. Didn't get much of a response. I gotta go a little bit stronger. There we go. Doesn't hurt, just feels weird, like a little bit of a shock kind of situation. So that's the first part. The second part of the test is the EMG portion. It's called electromyography. So that's the needle portion here. And this is testing the health of the muscle, kind of the muscle contraction. So what we do is, I'm gonna test my biceps. So we put the needle into the biceps here. One, two, three. And then you ask the patient to activate the muscle. So that's the response you wanna see there. And then I usually test about five or six of these muscles. This helps, so say if a surgeon sends me a patient with arm pain, you know, and think it's coming from the neck, but they're not sure what level it's coming from. This helps me delineate, you know, for the surgeon if it's a C4 or a C6 level. Um, additionally, say if they have carpal tunnel, I'm able to figure out if it's more mild, moderate, or severe. If it's severe, I would send the patient to a hand surgeon for a carpal tunnel release. If it's more mild, I would um, have the patient wear one of these. This is a carpal tunnel wrist splint. They may ha sleep with their wrist bent and that can compress that nerve there. So what this 
brace does is it helps prevent that wrist flexion. So they wear them at night and hopefully that helps with kind of the numbness tingling in their hands. So this is one of the modalities that I have that I can use on my patients. PM&R physicians, also known as physiatrists, are also trained in musculoskeletal conditions. So they can treat shoulder pain, knee pain. Um, oftentimes I use my ultrasound machine here to kind of use that as a guidance when I'm injecting so I can see my needle and where it's going. So I'll open up this machine here and show you how that works. All right. So here, this is a portable ultrasound machine. It's really simple. I have a tablet and this is the probe that connects in there. So I can use this in clinic um, to look at someone's shoulder or knee. And so this is my rotator cup. You can see that kind of moving there. And I use this to, one, make sure you know the shoulder looks okay. And then two, I use a needle to inject and I can then kind of see where that needle's going. So it's a pretty cool gadget to have in clinic. So in the morning we reviewed, you know, I do some injections in clinic downstairs about three to five. And I come up, come up here and I see patients in clinic till noon. So during that time I do those nerve conduction EMG tests. Sometimes I have an ultrasound injection in clinic and then just new patients for neck, back pain. And then after I'm done, I go back downstairs and I do injections in the afternoon. Usually I'm done by 4.30, 5, and then I come back into my office and finish my notes. So let's go take a look. So this is my office, welcome. Um, got a few things here. I have a plant here. I don't have the best green thumb, so the one plant I had died. So one of the other surgeons, one of my friends here, gave me a plant that will never die. And this obviously is not a real plant. So all my plants here <laughs> look good. Um, showing you around my office. Oh, here's another fake plant. Um, these are my diploma in my high school and my college. I'm a big basketball fan. I love women's sports. So U.S. women's national soccer team is a big inspiration for me, as well as the WNBA. I have Diana Trossi's jersey here that's signed. I have to get this, this framed. Um, Uva Lane, that's a kangaroo there. That's from my Austin College. My undergrad, the mascot is kangaroo. So this is just some stuff that kind of reminds me of of how I got here. I'm Dr. Sheena Buva, physical medicine and rehabilitation physician who specializes in interventional spine and musculoskeletal medicine. So growing up, you know, I was always interested in being a doctor. I um, was around some physicians in my family who exposed me to the field and I grew up playing basketball and did martial arts. So I had my fair share of injuries and I always enjoyed working with my hands. I would play with Legos and make Kinex models all the time. So when I was in middle school playing um, for the team, I dislocated my finger pretty badly. And so this is actually the x-ray that was taken. Um, I took it to work the next day. It showed my finger was completely dislocated and it was shown it off. And um, that kind of exposed me to the physical therapy, physical medicine field. High school, I was able to do a class called clinical rotation. So they let you rotate with different physicians in the field. And I was exposed more to the medical field that way. I went to Austin College in Sherman, which is a small liberal arts school for undergrad. They're well known for their pre-med program. And while I was there, I majored in sociology and minored in biology. So just tells you, you don't really have to major in a science field as long as you get your prereqs um, completed for medical school. So once I got into medical school, I went to Texas A&M in College Station. I was there for um, two years. And during my first year, really the first week of medical school, I was looking at the different specialties on the AAMC website and I came across physical medicine and rehab. So going into medical school, I thought I wanted to do orthopedic surgery because I loved muscles and bones and loved working with my hands. So I thought I wanted to be a surgeon, but I came across this field and um, it really focused on quality of life and function. It was a very diverse field. So you can work with patients with spinal cord injuries, brain injuries, people who have had strokes, and then also patients who have had issues with um, back and neck. And so 
I was able to do an externship after my first year of medical school and I was exposed to the field a bit more. And I thought, you know, this may be a good fit. You know, I don't have to be in the OR all the time. The quality of life may be a little bit better than a surgeon, but I still get to do a lot of hands-on um, things such as spine injections and EMGs. And so I applied for residency in PM&R. So with physical medicine and rehab, the residency is four years total, but your first year you do a either a preliminary year in internal medicine, which is what I did, or a transitional year. Some PM&R programs have it built in, so you just go to one place. So I uh, was matched into a prelim medicine year in Brooklyn, so I spent one year in Brooklyn, and then I came back to Dallas and did my three-year residency um, in physical medicine and rehab at Baylor. So after residency, you can go straight into practice if you want during general um, inpatient rehabilitation or even outpatient rehab. I knew I wanted to do interventional spine, so that requires a one-year fellowship. So I applied and got into a program in Phoenix, Desert Spine and Sports Physicians, and that's where I learned more about the injections. And then I came back here to Plano, which is my hometown. I always knew I wanted to practice around here, and, and here I am. So after training in terms of salary, now that's a very popular question, so it really depends on where you are in the country and your cost of living, but coming out of fellowship as an interventional spine physician, you can make anywhere from $250,000 to $300,000 your first year. Then after that, as you get more established and you're picking up you know, your numbers of procedures, you can make up to five hundred dollars or even you know, more, $600,000 or more. So physiatry is a very rewarding field. I think I mentioned before, you know, we focus on a lot of function and quality of life. So I really enjoy seeing patients getting better, either if it's through physical therapy, so we work very closely with physical therapists, help coordinate care, or if they need an injection, um, the injections can help with their pain. And so it's just seeing how patients do after those modalities, those treatment modalities. So whether it's, you know, not all patients are athletes, right? Some patients, all they want to do is be able to lift their grandkids up. So it's always very rewarding to see patients who are able to get back to their goals. Physical medicine and rehab, we're a very small, close-knit field. So I think my best advice for medical students and even residents who are interested in the field or are doing fellowship is actually my friend and I, Dr. Benicia Williams, we started a virtual physiatry mentorship page on Facebook and Instagram. So if you want to follow us on there, just search for the virtual physiatry mentors. And we post daily pearls on PM&R, um, anywhere from you know what you need to know for rotations to business of medicine. And then every Sunday we host a Facebook Live with someone in the field. Um, you know, just giving advice about, you know, what, what they recommend and how they got to where they are. So check that out, you know, um, especially nowadays during this COVID pandemic, a lot of away rotations are being canceled and you may not have that one-on-one -on -one mentorship that you've had in the past. So it's nice to kind of form an online community. So hopefully that can, um, we can provide that need for, for those people that are interested. best way to contact me um, if you're a, a patient is to just go on our website www.texasback.com and you can ask to see me as a physical medicine and rehab physician and in terms of if you guys have any questions about the field you can always um, message me on Instagram at Dr. S. Buva or also through our virtual physiatry mentorship page. It's Dr. Buva. Thanks for following me around today. Hope you found it fun and interesting to see what a day in the life of a PM&R physician is like.